In the early 1960s, the casting process for the innovative television series, The Outer Limits, brought together a talented group of actors who would help define the show's unique blend of science fiction and horror. For the lead role of Control Voice, the production team sought a distinctive, authoritative voice to introduce each episode. After a series of auditions, Vic Perrin was chosen for his ability to convey the right mix of gravitas and mystery. As for the series' characters, the creators wanted actors who could convincingly embody a variety of roles, from scientists and soldiers to aliens and otherworldly beings. One of the first actors cast was Adam West, who would later become famous for his role as Batman. In The Outer Limits, West played a number of different characters, showcasing his versatility and range. Another key casting choice was Shirley Knight, who brought a quiet intensity to her roles. She was chosen for her ability to convey complex emotions with subtlety and nuance. The casting of veteran actor Barry Morse was also pivotal. Known for his work on stage and screen, Morse brought a sense of gravitas and experience to the show. During the casting process, the producers also looked for chemistry between the actors. They believed that the success of the show depended on the ability of the cast to work together and create believable, engaging characters. One example of this can be seen in the pairing of Don Gordon and Robert Culp, who played partners in several episodes. Their natural chemistry and easy rapport helped to create a sense of camaraderie and tension on screen. Overall, the casting process for The Outer Limits was a careful, deliberate one. The producers sought out actors who could bring depth and complexity to their roles and who could work together to create a compelling, immersive world. Through their efforts, they assembled a talented cast that would help to make The Outer Limits a classic of science fiction television. But they call you Drifter. That's because I drift. The Outer Limits, a 1963 TV series, was brought to life by director Leslie Stevens. His directorial vision was heavily influenced by his background in theater and his interest in science fiction. Stevens approached each episode with a commitment to creating a unique world that pushed the boundaries of television at the time. Stevens' style was characterized by his use of striking visuals, innovative special effects, and thought-provoking storylines. He worked closely with the cast and crew to ensure that every aspect of the production aligned with his creative vision. Stevens' collaborative approach extended to the writers, who were encouraged to explore complex themes and ideas in their scripts. One of Stevens' key influences was the German Expressionist movement, which is evident in the show's use of dramatic lighting and shadow. He also drew inspiration from the pulp science fiction magazines of the 1930s and 1940s, which helped to shape the show's sense of adventure and imagination. Stevens' direction was marked by his attention to detail and his commitment to creating a cohesive and immersive viewing experience. He worked closely with the show's production designers, cinematographers, and special effects teams to ensure that every element of the show contributed to the overall vision. In terms of collaboration with the cast, Stevens was known for his ability to draw out strong performances from his actors. He worked closely with each member of the cast to help them understand their characters and the world in which they existed. Steven's approach was marked by his respect for the actors and his willingness to listen to their ideas and input. In summary, Leslie Stevens' directorial vision for The Outer Limits was characterized by his commitment to creating a unique and immersive world. His use of striking visuals and innovative special effects and his collaborative approach to working with the cast and crew. His influence can be seen in every aspect of the show, from the scripts to the set design, and his legacy continues to resonate with audiences today. Lisa, there's no place to go out there. The Outer Limits is a classic 1963 sci-fi TV series that explores the unknown realms of space and beyond. With its thrilling storylines and thought-provoking themes, it has captured the hearts of many viewers. One of the show's standout features is the impressive cast, including many well-known Hollywood actors. Who was your favorite? I still remember the first time I watched The Outer Limits. It was a rainy afternoon, and I was captivated by the show's unique blend of science fiction and horror. Since then, I've discovered many surprising and emotional facts about the series that I can't wait to share with you. Do you have a favorite episode or memory related to The Outer Limits? We would love to hear your stories and experiences in the comments below. 
So, stay tuned to learn more about this groundbreaking TV series, including some funny, shocking, and sad facts that you won't want to miss. The Outer Limits, a 1963 TV series, was known for its unique set design and innovative techniques. The show's creators, Leslie Stephen and Joseph Stefano, wanted to differentiate it from other sci-fi series of the time. They chose a Monster of the Week format, with each episode featuring a new alien or otherworldly creature. To bring these creatures to life, the production team employed cutting-edge techniques, including early forms of chroma key technology. This allowed them to superimpose actors and sets over various backgrounds, creating the illusion of otherworldly landscapes. The set design was also a significant aspect of the production. The team built a variety of sets, including spaceship interiors, alien planets, and futuristic laboratories. They used force perspective and other optical illusions to make the sets appear larger and more impressive on screen. However, filming The Outer Limits was not without its challenges. The show's high concept episodes and elaborate set designs often led to long shooting schedules and budget overruns. Additionally, the chroma key technology was still in its infancy and the team often had to deal with technical glitches and imperfections. Despite these challenges, The Outer Limits was praised for its groundbreaking visual effects and imaginative storytelling. The show's legacy can still be seen in modern sci-fi television, with its influence evident in series like The Twilight Zone, Star Trek, and Doctor Who. The television series The Outer Limits, which first aired in the 1960s, stands out as a marvel of its time, offering a unique viewing experience that differs greatly from the computerized special effects that are commonplace today. The show's charm lies in its use of mood, lighting, acting, directing, and exceptional musical, and sound effects to create a captivating atmosphere. As a seven-year-old child when the show first aired, I still recall the sense of wonderment, apprehension, and even dread that it evoked. The series score, composed by Dominic Frontier, was nothing short of brilliant, and its absence in the second season was noticeable. Despite the show's limited budget and technology, it managed to convey deep emotions and pathos that are often lacking in today's productions. The success of The Outer Limits was due in large part to its ability to engage viewers' minds and encourage them to imagine themselves in the atmospheric settings created by the show. While special effects today can be produced at the push of a button, they often lack the soul and thought-provoking quality that made shows like The Outer Limits and The Twilight Zone so special. It is unfortunate that The Outer Limits was moved to a graveyard time slot on Saturday nights, which may have contributed to its decline in quality. Nevertheless, the show remains a testament to the power of creative storytelling and the importance of engaging viewers' minds and emotions. Come, my son. The others are waiting for us. We are all going home together. No! The music in The Outer Limits, a 1963 sci-fi TV series, played a crucial role in enhancing the narrative and emotional tone. The score was composed by Dominic Frontier, who was just 28 at the time. He used unconventional methods, such as playing a piano with rubber balls and using a violin bow on guitar strings to create unique sounds. Frontier's music was designed to evoke a sense of mystery and suspense aligning perfectly with the show's themes of the unknown and the paranormal. He often used discordant harmonies and unexpected rhythm changes to keep viewers on edge. The main title theme, with its haunting their men melody and dramatic brass fanfares, became instantly recognizable and set the tone for each episode. The soundtrack also featured performances by the Dominic Frontier Orchestra, which included top studio musicians of the time. They helped bring Frontier's compositions to life, adding depth and richness to the musical tapestry of the series. Frontier's work on The Outer Limits has been highly praised for its innovative approach and significant contribution to the overall atmosphere of the show. His music not only complemented the narrative, but also stood as a character in its own right, heightening the emotional impact of each episode. Go to. George McCready, known for his role in The Outer Limits, 
formed a close friendship with Vincent Price while they were both acting in Victoria Regina. Henry Silva, another actor in the series, was of mixed heritage with a Spanish mother and Italian father. Born in Brooklyn, he was raised primarily by his mother after his father left when he was only three months old. Silva decided to become an actor at the age of eight, finding inspiration in his mother's storytelling abilities. He later denied being of Puerto Rican descent, despite it being commonly reported, and clarified that he was born in the United States, but spent most of his childhood in Spain. Silva can be heard on the DVD version of The Return of Mr. Moto, providing commentary on his experiences and heritage. No one ever saw him again. One of the most iconic scenes in the 1963 TV series, The Outer Limits, is from the episode The Architects of Fear. In this scene, a scientist, led by fear and paranoia, undergoes a transformation into a monstrous creature to unite humanity against an impending alien invasion. The direction by Byron Haskin is particularly noteworthy. The scene is filled with suspense as the camera closely captures the scientist's apprehension and fear. The use of shadows and dim lighting adds to the eerie atmosphere, making the scene even more intense. Russell Johnson's performance as the tormented scientist is exceptional. His portrayal of the character's inner turmoil and fear is palpable, drawing the audience into the story. Johnson's ability to convey the character's emotions through subtle facial expressions and body language is a testament to his acting prowess. The cinematography by Conrad Hall is also noteworthy. The use of close-ups and low-angle shots adds to the scene's intensity, while the muted color palette enhances the eerie atmosphere. The camera work is smooth and deliberate, drawing the viewer's attention to the most important aspects of the scene. This iconic scene has had a significant impact on the audience. It has been praised for its suspenseful direction, powerful performance, and atmospheric cinematography. The scene has also been analyzed for its commentary on fear, paranoia, and the dangers of blindly following authority. According to Byron Haskin, the director, the scene was intended to be a commentary on the dangers of fear and paranoia. He wanted to show how these emotions could lead to disastrous consequences, both for the individual and for society as a whole. Russell Johnson, the actor, has also spoken about the scene. He has praised the direction and cinematography, noting how they helped to create the scene's intense atmosphere. Johnson has also discussed the challenges of portraying a character undergoing such a drastic transformation and how he worked to convey the character's inner turmoil and fear. In conclusion, the iconic scene from The Architects of Fear is a powerful example of the storytelling capabilities of The Outer Limits. Through its suspenseful direction, powerful performance, and atmospheric cinematography, the scene has left a lasting impact on the audience and continues to be analyzed and discussed today. Now if I could do it with a man, if I could create the man of... Leonard Nimoy, best known as Spock from Star Trek, incorporated a hand gesture in the show that was inspired by the Kohanim, Jewish priests, during their blessings to the congregation. He only performed half of the sign, making it unique to his character. In the 1960s, David McCallum, who also starred in The Outer Limits, pursued a music career and recorded four albums for Capitol Records with music producer David Axelrod. His piece The Edge gained popularity and was later sampled by Dr. Dre, Missin' Lynx, and Mass Days. Sally Kellerman, another actor in The Outer Limits, showcased her thespian skills in the Amundsen Theater's production of Holiday in 1980. She played Julia Seaton, appearing alongside Kevin Klein, Morris Evans, and Marissa Berenson. Get that atomic cartridge as soon as possible. In that case, I'll call Major Jars and tell him you have my permission. I think he should be there to explain. The Outer Limits, a 1963 sci-fi TV series, left a significant cultural and social impact. Its innovative storytelling and thought-provoking themes resonated with audiences, making it a hit. The show explored complex issues like the fear of the unknown, the impact of technology, and the nature of humanity. The series was influential in shaping pop culture, particularly in the science fiction genre. It inspired numerous future productions, including the reimagined version of The Outer Limits in the late 1990s. The show's iconic opening narration, 
there is nothing wrong with your television set, became a memorable catchphrase. The Outer Limits also contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. It challenged viewers to question their perceptions of reality and the role of technology in society. The series often featured episodes with a moral or philosophical undertone, encouraging audiences to reflect on the consequences of their actions. In essence, The Outer Limits served as a mirror to society, reflecting its hopes, fears, and aspirations. Its impact transcended the boundaries of television, leaving a lasting mark on popular culture and sparking important conversations. And you know where you think I should throw it? Yes. David McCallum, known for his role in The Man from UNCLE, is the only original star who did not appear on its spin-off series, The Girl from UNCLE. Before his acting career, McCallum's co-star, Martin Landau, worked as a newspaper artist, cartoonist, and illustrator for various publications. Leonard Nimoy, famous for his role as Spock in Star Trek, worked with fellow Star Trek actors George Takei and Nichelle Nichols in three different series Star Trek, Star Trek the Animated Series, and Futurama. This highlights the enduring nature of their on-screen chemistry and the show's lasting impact on popular culture. Uh, here's my friend, Willem Griffith. The Outer Limits, a 1963 science fiction television series, received positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The show was praised for its unique storylines, impressive special effects, and thought-provoking themes. Notable television critic Jack Good of the New York Times commended the series, stating that it has the promise of being a first-rate science fiction anthology. He particularly appreciated the show's ability to balance horror and science fiction elements while maintaining a sense of realism. Audiences were also captivated by the series. Many fans appreciated the show's willingness to tackle complex and sometimes controversial topics, such as the dangers of unchecked scientific progress and the implications of artificial intelligence. The Outer Limits received two Emmy nominations in 1964, including Outstanding Achievement in Cinematography for a Series, an outstanding achievement in art direction and scenic design for a series. While the show did not win in either category, the nominations themselves were a testament to the high production values and artistic merit of the series. These accolades were significant for those involved in the production of The Outer Limits. The positive reception and award nominations helped to establish the show's reputation as a high quality science fiction series and solidified its place in television history. The nominations also served as a recognition of the hard work and dedication of the show's cast and crew who worked tirelessly to bring the series' unique vision to life. In short, the critical reception and awards received by The Outer Limits were well-deserved and helped to cement its status as a classic of the science fiction genre. Escape dogs and desperation. Except with me, won't you come with me? In the 1963 series, The Outer Limits, several notable actors, including Leonard Nimoy, David McCallum, Cliff Robertson, Barbara Rush, and Peter Breck, made appearances in both this series and in a later revival of The Outer Limits. One episode, The Duplicate Man, features the famous Chemosphere House, designed by architect John Lochner. Although only exterior shots of the house were used, the interior shots were recreated on a set to mimic the unique design. During the series finale, The Probe, a live announcer interrupted the Control Voice's closing statement, announcing that the King Family Show would air in its place the following week. This unexpected interruption meant that the regular Control Voice closing was only heard during reruns of the episode. Do you agree with him, sir? Well, I would not disagree. During the filming of The Outer Limits in 1963, the show's creator, Leslie Stevens, had a unique approach to directing. He would often give the directors only the basic story outline, allowing them to fill in the details as they saw fit. This led to a diverse range of styles and interpretations throughout the series. The show's special effects team, led by Tom Howard, was known for their innovative techniques. They created many of the show's memorable creatures and aliens using materials like foam rubber, latex, and even cabbage leaves. The team worked tirelessly to bring these strange and, and otherworldly beings to life. One of the show's most iconic episodes, The Architects of Fear, 
featured a man wearing a terrifying alien mask. The actor inside the mask, Robert Culp, had trouble breathing and could only wear it for short periods of time. The crew had to carefully plan each shot to accommodate Culp's limited breathing time. Despite the challenges, the cast and crew of The Outer Limits remained dedicated to creating a high-quality science fiction series. They worked long hours and poured their hearts into every episode, resulting in a show that continues to captivate audiences to this day. I haven't been able to pinpoint it yet. It's taken a lot of power just to get this much. Henry Silva, known for his roles in Italian Poliziotesky films, also made appearances in The Outer Limits. He played the character Bane in three different series. Interestingly, five episodes of The Outer Limits were remade for the same show, with titles such as I, Robot, and The Inheritors being used more than once. However, the Human Factor episodes have no connection beyond the title. Silva's career included at least 25 movies between 1966 and 1977, where he often portrayed villains, hitmen, or dark heroes. The Outer Limits, a 1963 sci-fi TV series, holds a significant place in film history. It is known for its thought-provoking storylines and innovative special effects, which set it apart from other shows of the time. The Outer Limits explored complex themes like extraterrestrial life, technology, and the human condition, leaving a lasting impact on the science fiction genre. The series served as a stepping stone for many filmmakers and writers who drew inspiration from its unique narratives and visual style. Its influence can be seen in various subsequent works, such as the cult classic film Star Wars, which borrowed some conceptual ideas from The Outer Limits. Additionally, the series paved the way for the creation of the Twilight Zone-inspired anthology series Black Mirror, which shares The Outer Limits' focus on exploring the darker side of technology and its impact on society. The Outer Limits also inspired numerous standalone films, TV shows, and books, solidifying its status as a timeless classic in the world of science fiction. Watch the results later on TV. It's a great idea. I'll be there by noon. The song We Control the Sound by W&W &W and Head and Tours features a reprise of the opening narration from the Outer Limits series, stating there is nothing wrong with your sound system. Do not attempt to adjust the volume. We're now controlling transmissions. Leonard Nimoy, known for his role as Spock in Star Trek, shared a notable connection with Richard McAleon, his co-star from The Boston Kid. Both actors passed away on the same day, February 27, 2015. Nimoy's iconic role as Spock in Star Trek can be traced back to his work in The Lieutenant, a TV series by Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry. After discussions about the character of Spock, Roddenberry, and casting director Joseph Diagosta remembered Nimoy and invited him to the sets. Nimoy was then offered the role, marking the beginning of his most famous character and a popular culture icon. He was innocent. His wife had been wanting a divorce. She had met a... Leonard Nimoy, best known for his role as Spock in Star Trek, had a varied career beyond the popular franchise. After leaving the 1963 TV series The Outer Limits, he hosted the Mutual Radio Theater on Mutual Radio in 1980. Nimoy and child actor Carl Stevens shared a unique connection as they both portrayed Spock and Mel Mermelstein in different projects. The Vulcan nerve pinch move in Star Trek was actually Nimoy's invention created to allow Spock to overpower adversaries without resorting to violence. This highlights Nimoy's creative input and problem-solving skills during his time on the show. Leonard Nimoy, best known as Spock from Star Trek, had a history of working with Malachi Throne, appearing together in four different productions. Many guest stars on The Outer Limits had been victims of the Hollywood blacklist a decade earlier, making their appearance on the show one of their first acting jobs in years. The original title of the series, Please Stand By, was changed due to the Cuban Missile Crisis, as it might have caused fear of an air raid. The phrase, Please Stand By, was used as a reference to this when the show cut to a commercial break. Well, then you'd better be prepared for an explosion that will destroy half this state. What are you talking about? That David McCallum, known for his role in The Outer Limits, 
has a history of working with Robert Vaughn in three different series, The Man from UNCLE, Please Don't Eat the Daisies, and The Yatim. Actress Sally Kellerman, who also appeared in The Outer Limits, had a busy schedule around 1995. She starred in the play Anti Mame at the Mouse Jupiter Theater and performed in back to back plays in Boston and Edmonton. In Boston, she played Martha in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf and starred in a two character production of The Lay of the Land with Michael Hogan in Edmonton. This production was later turned into a film in which Kellerman reprised her role. Martin Landau, another Outer Limits actor, has an interesting family background. His parents, Major Joel Landau and Selma Butchman, were immigrants from Austria. They had two daughters, Eleanor and Constance, and his father worked as a machinist for a sewing machine company. If you have memories and experiences related to the 1963 TV series, The Outer Limits, we'd love to hear from you. This groundbreaking show has influenced many in the world of cinema, and we're sure it's had an impact on your life as well. Perhaps you were inspired by the show's unique storytelling or its innovative use of special effects. Or maybe it sparked your imagination and led you to explore the world of science fiction. Whatever your connection to The Outer Limits, we encourage you to share your thoughts and memories with us. You can do this by liking and sharing this post, leaving a comment, or subscribing to our page for more cinematic explorations. By engaging with us in this way, you'll be joining a community of people who appreciate the power of television and cinema to inspire and entertain. We can't wait to hear from you and learn more about your experiences with The Outer Limits. Touchy. Alright. Maybe pretty. In a side way.